afternoon everyone good afternoon Dad, it is so wonderful to see you again. You too, in person. In, in person. person, it's been too long. Uh, and oh my God, what a year it's been for you! <laughs> it has been a busy year. Yes. It's been a and busy. It's only year. February, by the way. <laughs> it, it, it is exactly. And but but even the last twelve months at Netflix, so much has happened. I mean, on January nineteenth, Reed Hastings, after two decades, stepped down. and you know handed over the reins formally to you and co-CEO Greg Peters uh 2022 was really difficult in terms of at one point you had a loss of subscribers the stock prices plummet and then in December 7.5 million subscribers are added which is actually beyond the analyst forecasts yeah it's been a roller coaster <laughs> ride Yeah. Well, first on Reed, which is great. Uh, four years ago, he spoke at this conference, and this is post the transition. This is my first international visit to this conference. So nice. thrilled Welcome to be in back. India. I'm thrilled to be here tonight. <laughs> um, and then on the other, uh, yeah, the first half of the year was pretty rough last year. Uh, got off to a slow start. The so, um, recovery from COVID and all these things made things quite uncertain. Remember, we. Shut down our operation in Russia, where we had a million subscribers drop. So there was a whole lot of things we were navigating the first part of the year, and then the second half of the year um, really, you know, got got moving. Uh, and I think it really speaks to the company that Reed built, uh, which was a uh, filled with people who are incredibly smart and resilient. And we really got singularly focused on reigniting growth, uh, and then we had, you know, focused on the content and the programming around the world. uh built an ad product in 6 months from scratch uh to out working in the world um and and the programming starting probably with stranger things season 4 and then rolling into a big global phenomenon like wednesday uh and back to back hits from all of our content around the world um it's just been uh, it's just the windows at our back for sure what's your top priority right now um reigniting growth of the company um we've got if you think about um There was a lot of discussion about the streaming business in the last six months. People were openly questioning whether or not this is a good business. Well, of course, it's a great business because this is what consumers want. Uh, the world is moving to streaming and on demand, uh, the, and away from linear television, away from pay television, and away from transactional movies. Uh, and the people who do this well, um, which we've been solely focused on for 25 years as a company. Uh, to be uh, very critical in this space and in terms of being profitable um look at what is success streaming i really think there are three business metrics only three the business can be portrayed very complex or very simple i think it's quite simple number one is engagement do people watch how much do they watch where do they watch and when it comes to engagement um you know we're clearly leading that around the world uh when the second one which is revenue do people pay or they think this is worth paying for this content that we're watching uh and then because that can be reinvested in more content and more programming and creating consumer joy uh and then the third is profit is it profitable and um among all of our peers we are profitable we are netflix is a profit is is company is profitable globally in our streaming endeavors which our major competitors are not so if you look at um sub counts and all those kind of things those are sub metrics the real metrics of the business are engagement revenue and profit okay i'm going to come back to that but before i have to ask you um so speaking of the streaming and 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 non-profit and profit i just read a piece in time magazine yeah. which said the streaming wars are now in their chaos era okay and they said <laughs> it said that any platform that's not named netflix is losing money uh disney is laying off thousands of people uh and one of the one of the lines in the piece was that the content arms race kicked off by netflix hasn't paid off uh what's your take give us a sense of what's happening what are these streaming wars um well it depends on who paid it off for uh yes we we have a we did definitely ignite what i think is the largest explosion of original production maybe in the history of the medium um and i think our from our perspective um you have to bring a lot to the table in the new generation of uh, entertainers um people have very diverse taste and they have and they expect what they to get what they want 
and you don't always feel like the same thing. I always joke about that. Um, my wife and I never agree what to watch, and we love each other enough to be married and live in the same home. Uh, and so people have very different tastes and different moods, and you have to have something for all those moods. So we started investing in a lot of breadth of content early on. Uh, and so we're, for our early investment has paid off. Uh, and for us, the, what, what they talk about being the only company that isn't called Netflix, uh, they're all losing money. Where we're, why we're not, we never took our P&L to zero to grow this business. We grew it soundly uh, by really focusing on consumers and consumer first. And we didn't, uh, so I think as long as you're in the happy consumer business, uh, you can grow infinitely as long as you keep those members happy. Ted, you talked about breadth of content, but you know, when House of Cards first premiered in 2013, uh, you had said that we want to become HBO before HBO can become us. But more recently, you've said that Netflix is going to be part HBO, part FX, part Comedy Central, part the Food Network. Uh, is this a change of tack? No, it's an expansion of it. So yes, we still do that type of programming that we talked about back in the House of Cards days, which, believe it or not, is, is 10 years ago this month uh, we launched House of Cards. So it, just, it feels like we've been in it for 50 years, but it's 10 years ago this month. And when you think about that and the, then continuing to broaden the offering, we only were doing a handful of kind of prestige dramas in the early days. And today we produce across every genre of television programming, every version of movies, every genre of movies. Um, so when you say that we want to, when I said that about HBO, I was trying to get into the shorthand, which is I think that they were at the time the kind of North Star of high quality programming. And we had not yet made anything. So I said, when we get into this, I want to be that great at making the programming before they get better and better at kind of managing subscription services and streaming. Eventually, everyone was going to do that, and we wanted to beat them at the quality before they beat us at streaming. So, and I think we largely have done that, and we've moved way beyond wanting to be HBO. Um, but if you look at it and say, why well, I said those, we want to be all those things, M much like India, what is it? I'm going to say right, uh, Tamal, uh, Tami, Tami. Right? The tali. The, the, yeah, tali, tali, sorry. Right. Uh, where it's a little bit of everything. Yeah. And because I think that is what people want. Right? I think sometimes you want a drama, sometimes you want a comedy. Or sometimes with this incredible history uh, and rich history of Indian cinema, sometimes you want it all in the same movie. Uh, and we want to be able to provide that. So. so is it like Bella said, we want to replace all television? Well, we want to be your choice. We want to make your favorite show your favorite film. Uh, and so right now you do that by navigating through 500 cable, cable channels uh, to land on one. And we're saying is not only can you find that all on Netflix, we'll help you find the thing that you love. And there's tremendous value in being very good at figuring out consumer taste and helping them navigate through the world of enormous choices.